Hello, friends and fellow watchers of Illusion to another Del Boy retrospective film review and unboxing. And as I've mentioned before, I sometimes have difficulty with choosing the films that I want to talk about because I've got so many. Um, but this one was quite an easy one in the end because during some uh, other work that I do uh, on my channel, um, we've been talking an awful lot about nostalgia and childhood films, films that we used to watch as children, um, that used to be on TV and bank holidays, uh, that um, basically were more fantasy related. Um, perfect examples of these would be Warlords of Atlantis, uh, At the Earth's Core, uh, the Seventh Voyage of Sinbad, uh, Gulliver's Travels, all of those sorts of films, War of the Worlds. And um, all of those films I watched with great delight and excitement. Um, and I'm not quite sure even now what it is about them, um, but I'll try and probably come to a conclusion with that towards the end. But um, today... Um, we're going to be looking at a film that is a very favourite of mine as a child. Uh, and that is this one here called First Men in the Moon, which is based on the novel by H.G. Wells, which he wrote in 1901. Now, this isn't the first time that this book has been turned into a film because it was made into a film in 1919, a silent film during... Uh, a very early era, era of, of film history. Um, but this is the one that I remember, and it was made in 1964. Um, and I'll always remember the first time seeing it because I was just mesmerised uh, by the special effects at first. But I also liked the humour. Um, intrigued about the idea of going to the moon um, and what was up there and is there life so you know as a child all of these things sort of like grip you and the first time I saw this film was at a children's club so there was we had a cinema uh, in my hometown and on a Saturday you used to pay a small amount of money which included some popcorn and a drink and you were able to watch a double feature along with some cartoons and some episodic um, films that we used to see like you used to see during the war like Flash Gordon Conquers the World and that sort of thing um, and this one was a double bill along with a film called uh, Sinbad and the Eye of the Tiger and the similarity between the two generally is the person that did the special effects. And that name is Ray Harryhausen. And that's a very important name to a child and a person of my era because he pioneered or was one of the lead pioneers of something called stop motion photography. And this is where you used very high detailed models, uh, usually made out of clay, and you move them one frame at a time until you've got the full thing moving per second. So if you can imagine how many frames there are in a second of film and then times that by the special effects required in an hour and a half plus film, um, you'll know that the special effects were either cut to a minimum or um, were very short and brief um, but in this particular film you didn't need all the stop motion photography because there was all of the lure of having a widescreen image of things like the craters on the moon uh, the caverns underneath the moon etc but I'm going ahead of myself here um, what's the story about and I don't want to give too many spoilers in it because i want you to actually um, consider watching it um, but the film starts in 1964 it's present day and man has now taken off uh, from the earth and landed on the moon 
there are broadcasts being sent to the news media uh, about the moon landing um, and they're walking along the craters of the moon where they uncover a flag and it's the flag of Great Britain and there is a note attached to it saying that the moon has been um, claimed by Great Britain on behalf of Queen Victoria and it had um, a person's name there um, and it was a, a lady's name I'm gonna have to look at my notes here because I forgot what the lady's name is <laughs> uh, yes it was her name was Kate Cullender um, and uh, and so uh, this intrigued the media to go what the hell we're supposed to be the first to reach the moon and it looks very much like we've we um, reached the moon um, 60 years previously so they did all their research and found out that uh, although the person that the name the name is in the is, is for the name of the person who's claimed the moon that person has died but her husband was still alive and living in a nursing home um so they head for the nursing home and they come across um edward judd's character his name is bedford um and he's a bit doddy um but basically they they managed to ask him the questions did you go to the moon for which he then recited the tale and that's how the film starts um and it tells a, a fantastic tale all set around victorian england um it tells the tale that uh, bedford was um living in a house in the country which he was renting um he'd moved there with his fiance because he was a failed playwright and needed to get away to recoup his career choice um and just as he was about to um get caught by um financiers that want their money um there was there there is a big stately home very close by um and a and a gentleman there wanted to buy the cottage so this is where the the scam comes in so he agrees to sell the cottage um but only if um he could be part of whatever the the person who owns at the stately homes um jobs involved so he visits him and the the, the person who's living there is joseph cavor joseph cavor is a sort of like a a professor um and he's planning something totally um bewildering to anybody that you if you, you ever spoke about it he's planning to go to the moon and he's planning he's been planning to do this for over a year he's invented a liquid that when you coat it onto an object it it basically defies gravity and therefore will shoot you like a bullet away from the earth to wherever you want to go into in space uh and he calls the liquid cavorite um although totally fantastical um he agrees to sell the house um joseph cavor um entices him to uh, be a part of the project because he needs somebody else inside the craft by saying that there is gold on the moon and that's where they were going to be heading um and it's like i say a very very funny story at the beginning it's like a more like a comedy uh, but eventually we get to the point where um Cavarite is covered into a, onto a sort of like a di deep sea diving bell type uh, via, uh, craft and the fiance gets involved um they all clamber into um the diving bell and all of a sudden gravity is let loose across this diving bell and it shoots off into space and they have their journey now heading towards the moon uh, when they get to the moon and it's a quite a nasty crash they do have some um, breathing equipment and some suits and uh, they decide to take a wander on the moon service surface and uh, and they declare the moon uh, in the name of queen victoria uh, but as they head back to the diving bell where they crash landed 
it's actually moved. It's gone. It's disappeared, along with the fiancé who was inside because there were only two spacesuits. And that's where we discover that there is life on the moon. Um, and the creatures on the moon um, are called cellarites. That's right. Um, they're sort of ant-like creatures. And they're intrigued by where the our free heroes have come from, what their purpose is, and... Uh, and want to study them. And I'm not going to go any further with the story because that's where it suddenly uh, turns a shift slightly darker uh, in tone. This is where the special effects come in, which are absolutely lovely, gorgeous for 1964. Um, and we get the fantastic ending because this film bodes the question... Do we deserve to be kings of our own domain? Are we the end-all and be-all of the evolutional tree? Um, and that question is answered in this film. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's very poignant. Um, so I can't recommend this film highly enough the stop motion photography for which there is quite a bit in this film it just looks so much better and it fits in with the type of film that it is um as much as i love special effects i uh, i will always look for a physical effect over a computer generated one there is no computer generated imagery in this in this film um you've got some exceptional performances um the two that stand out for me are Lionel Jeffries, who is the scientist. Um, he's just always a laugh. You know, if you've ever seen him in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, um, you'll know what I mean. Um, just such a lively character, a character that can make you smile. You'd wish he was your granddad. Uh, Edward Judd came from this film um, from a, a, another science fiction film that had done um, a couple of years before which was The Day the Earth Caught Fire, uh, which got some exceptional reviews when it came out. Um, so I'm just going to show you now what you get with the film. And by the way, um, this is only available on Blu-ray at the moment. So you get the case, which you can see there. It's on the indicator label for Blu-ray. Um, there are a lot of extras you can see there. Uh, that it mentions about dynamation. That's a, a type of um, cinematography used for the stop-motion photography in this film. Um, it's a 4K uh, transfer onto Blu-ray. Uh, and overall, I was very impressed with the picture. Um, it's very clear. It's very colourful. Uh, the Victorian setting is is brilliant. But it's when you get to the moon that it really, really stands out on Blu-ray. And the special effects are just sub sublime. Um, the disc is also pictured. So you've got a picture disc. And it's also region-free. You can see the A, B and C symbols clearly on that disc. Unfortunately, you don't get much else. There is no booklet, no special features in regards to linear notes. Um, but... Um, this is constantly in sales uh, on the uh, Indicator uh, website. Um, and generally, you can buy this for around about £5. So it's, it, it's a, it's, it's, it's a no-brainer to get. Um, but from my point of view, I've come to the conclusion that when I was a child, I pretty much loved films set around Victorian England. It seemed that Victorian England was a time where you only had to dream it and you'd invented it. Um, it's where all our toilets and everything came from. It's where um, we upheld science on a very big level. We created buildings for scientists to work in. Um, and it just makes perfect sense that somebody like H.G. Wells would take that to the ninth degree 
and make uh, and read fantastical books about us being taken over by aliens or that there are worlds beneath our feet in the center of the center of the earth um and 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 so i every time i see a film like this i get a warm fuzzy feeling um and i'm just astounded uh on what rich stories there are around there and that's about it really for this review um i hope it's intrigued you first men in the moon like i say is not the first time that this film has been done it was done in uh black and white um in 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 1912 did i say yeah i think it was yeah 1919 but it was also uh, a bbc production uh that's been done in the in the last in the last 10 years um and that was also a very good remake of it um definitely look uh, you want to look out for that uh, i didn't think it was going to be as good as a, as a, um good as it turned out to be to be quite honest but if i was to choose which is the best version of this film it will always be the 1960 64 film and with that i'm going to say salute eh? i hope you enjoyed this capsule review uh, and there'll be some more coming very sh very soon thanks very much for looking bye bye